Joining us now with his investment strategy, Urian Timmer, Director of Global Macro at uh, Fidelity Investments. Uh, Yuri and I, I, you know, reading all your, your comments, I, I mean, I was nodding and I agree with everything, but I, you know what, it got me absolutely nowhere uh, agreeing with you uh, in terms of what I would do. And, and a lot of your questions are almost, uh, they're almost, they're not rhetorical, they're almost like questions of life. Like, we need to, to know what the Fed's going to do, we need to know whether the current policy is restrictive or not, which, as you point out, we don't know because we don't know where inflation is headed. We don't know whether it's, it's tight. And, and a lot of times, after the Fed gets to a certain point, they need to wait to see what the, the lag effects are, whether it really is restrictive. So you don't know. You're, is it restrictive? You don't have the answer to that. Um, we don't have, I mean, it looks restrictive, right? I mean, we look at the tips curve, it's at about two and right. a quarter, two and a half, as far as the eye can see. Uh, if R star, you know, the so-called natural rate of interest, which of course is a theoretical construct, is 1%, you add inflation to it, you know, the Fed looks to be restrictive, but then you look under the hood, right? You look at the liquidity indicators, you know, the Fed's balance sheet minus the reverse repo and the TGA, and that's been going sideways for a year. And you look at financial conditions, that's been going sideways for a year. So liquidity conditions really haven't gotten that much more restrictive um, in, in a while. And then, you know, as you mentioned, the, the tips market you know, is two and a quarter as far as the eye can see? Is that realistic when, you know, we have another strike here and where the labor versus capital pendulum seems to be swinging well, around? And so if, if three or four is the new two, then the Fed is not as restrictive as, it, as we all think. And w with that in mind, you're, we're tr you try to figure out whether we like stocks or bonds. So with bonds, and I point this out all the time, it, with, with bonds, you know, if you look at 4%, all right, you know, it's okay. Uh, but if interest rates are headed up, you're going to lose principal. So you got to figure out your duration. So if you stay short and then interest rates come down, then you can't reinvest. You're reinvesting at 2% again. So either option stinks to get a crappy 4% in the first place. It'd just be better to buy a 2.5% yielding stock in a company that you think has great prospects, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think you know, for the 60-40, um, I still like it warts and all. I think the bond market does look somewhat compelling here uh, with the caveat that money. if the inflation... For, for, for safe money, yeah, for, 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 for a, uh, a, a base in your portfolio. Yes, exactly. Because, you know, let's take the Barclays Aggregate Index, right, which is most, our, our bond index for investment-grade bonds. It has a duration of six and a yield of five. Uh, if yields go down 100 basis points, if that long, elusive recession ever comes, you make 11 percent, 6 plus 5. If yields back up 100 basis points, you lose 6 percent but make 5, so you only lose 1. So the risk-reward, <laughs> even at these yields, yeah, even if yields bad. go up for more, is, is pretty compelling. I mean, I, I would take those odds in the stock market you know, any day of the right. week. But it, 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 especially, and we only got about a minute, especially when you think we're at the twi in the twilight of a secular well, Mark, which other yeah. people have said. So you don't really like, you, you, you might actually prefer bonds to stocks on a risk reward uh, basis. Uh, I mean, stocks are, are, are still good, but the, the peak return, we, we got to 17% annualized return uh, in 2021. Uh, that's likely coming down. And if inflation does become more structural at maybe three or four instead of two, that's going to knock valuations down. So I, I do think there's a valuation headwind. That doesn't mean the market goes down. It just means that earnings have to do all the heavy lifting. And so uh, it, it's it's mostly a matter of, of maybe setting lower expectations because we did get very you know handsome double digit returns for for quite a few years since the financial crisis. All right. Uh, I don't know. Uh, that bit, you didn't give me a lot. I mean, you gave me a lot. It just is none of it's really that great, uh, Urian. For uh... but, you know it. it Investing is making real-time decisions with imperfect information. And so uh, testing our assumptions, I think, is something right. we all need to do. And I th think the inflation disconnect is the biggest one here. And risk management. You get, it'd be nice to yes. hold on to what you've worked hard uh, to get, you know, and, and not blow it trying to get outsized returns. So I understand all that. You're right.